Hey, my name is Nathan Greville, and today we're going to talk about seven steps to learning a jazz standard. Over the past two years, I've taught a lot of lessons, and one of the reoccurring themes with a lot of my students is that they just want to learn what is the best way to learn a jazz standard. And of course, there's no best way. There's always uh, a new way to do things, but over the years, I've started to devise a system that really works for me, and not only does it really work, it's very applicable to anyone. Anyone can just learn it. So in this video, we'll go over these seven steps. And I just released a course with jazz lesson videos. And we go even more in depth and we talk about several tunes. If you want to get instant access to that course, you can check out the link in the description below. And I find going very in depth on one tune at a time, you'll find all these processes that really boost your improvisation and overall musicianship. And not only that, you can immediately apply it to any tune that you learn from here on out. And even if you have your own process, chances are one of these processes you've probably never considered before, and you can add it to your own arsenal. And that's my goal here with you today. So let's go ahead and talk about each of these seven processes. So we're going to jump into the course material here, and we hope you enjoy this free content. This next tune we're going to get into is called All the Things You Are by Jerome Kern. This is a 36 bar tune, and this is one of my favorite jazz standards. The melody is beautiful. The lyrics are beautiful. The chord progression follows such a logical but beautiful pattern. And it's a bit abnormal that it's 36 bars rather than 32 bars. As always, my first step to learning a tune is to learn the melody first. Let's go ahead and play the melody. So step two is to learn and internalize the root notes of every chord, the bass notes. A quick tip, if you haven't already, I really do recommend learning the cycle of fourths ascending. Et cetera, et cetera. You'll see a very logical pattern using these fourths within the bass line of all the things you are. So the first five chords are all fourths. Then from this point on, we go up a half step and play a two, five, one. And two, five, one is fourth, fourth. So everything is fourth so far. And from this point on, we take this same root, but now we're going to turn it into a minor chord. And guess what? Same pattern. All fourths go up a half step, and then fourth, fourth, two, five, one. Right? After our F there, if we went up a half step and played two, five, one. Step three, we're going to learn the arpeggios of all the chords of this tune. The first five chords are all diatonic to each other. Diatonic means within the same scale. To simplify things, in this case, this scale will be our F major. If you were to take each scale degree of F major and stack thirds on them till you get a four note chord, you're left with seven different chords. There's your F major seven. There's your G minor 7, 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7. A minor 7. B flat major 7. C dominant 7, 1, 3, 5, flat 7. D minor 7. E half diminished seven, one, flat three, flat five, flat seven. And finally back to the one. So as you can see, the first and the fourth degree are both major seven. The second, third, and the sixth degrees are all minor sevens. The fifth degree is dominant seven, and the seventh degree is the half diminished seven. When we go back to the tune, the first five chords is a six, two, five, one, 
four. So we can apply everything we just learned from playing this scale when diatonic seventh chords to this tune, and you'll get this. <laughs> Step four, now we're going to take everything we just did and improvise using only the core tones. This is deceptively difficult, but the objective should be to make sure you are landing on the right chords at the right time using only the core tones. At first you'll feel really constricted and you'll find yourself playing other notes other than the core tones, but as you get more and more comfortable with this, you will notice that your freedom starts to grow and the other aspects such as your rhythm or your use of space or even the amount of intervals that you can start to jump around with. So now I'm gonna demonstrate. Step five, we're going to learn the chord scales of each of these chords. So the first five chords are all diatonic to each other. It's a six, two, five, one, four, and they all belong to the same parent scale of our F major. So the first chord is a six chord, it's a D minor seven, and the sixth mode of the F major scale is the D Aeolian. So we're gonna play D Aeolian. <laughs> The formula to an Aeolian scale is one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. This is also called the natural minor scale. The next scale is the second degree of our scale because six, two, five, one, four. And the second mode is called Dorian. And as we know, as we've talked about earlier in the course, it's one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. <laughs> Or you could just think of the F major scale starting on the seventh. The next chord is our five chord, so we're going to play the Mixolydian. Everything is the same as major, but the seventh will now be lowered to the flat seven. And finally, we get our one chord, our major. Now, the four chord is also a major seventh, but now it will have that raised fourth. This gives us the B flat Lydian sound. One, two, three. Sharp four, five, six, seven. Um, if we were to play B flat major, we would have an E flat in this, but because this is part of the F major family, we are going to play an E natural. Now the next chord, we're going to go up a half step from this B flat. So now we're gonna play a B minor seven. And now we're all within the A major family. So we're gonna play the two of A major, the five of A major, and the one. So this would give us Dorian, Mixolydian, and then major. We're gonna practice linear improvisation using only scalar motion to navigate all these changes. So for the first exercise, we're just gonna go up and down the full range of our horn. And when we hit the corresponding chord, we're going to play the corresponding chord scale in the right time. In the final step, step seven, we're going to take a rhythm and we're going to apply everything we just talked about and improvise freely, but really constricting ourselves to that same single rhythm throughout the entire form of the piece. The rhythm of choice that we'll use is this one. Da 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 da
Let me demonstrate. so much for watching and welcome to the channel jazz lesson videos and it's crazy to be on this channel what am i doing here go ahead and give it a subscribe if you haven't already there will be lots of more jazz content jazz tutorials jazz everything jazz have a good day